Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're looking at a program called Dragon Bones. Now, Dragon Bones is a animation software and game engine runtime combination uh, for basically animating 2D graphics that you cut up into pieces, and then you use um, traditional IK-based bone animation. Now, by no means is Dragon Bones alone in this regard. Uh, I checked out a product earlier on my channel called Spine uh, from Esoteric Software. This is probably the uh, best known, but again, by no means the only option out there. There's also also Spriter from Brash Monkey, and there's um, Creature from Kestrel Moon, and I intend to look at all of these eventually, uh, and hopefully I can look at them all at the same time and give you some comparison, but for now we're looking specifically at Dragon Bones. Now one of the unfortunate things about today in particular is the Dragon Bones website is down. Uh, see if it, yeah, it's still down, which is strange because uh, just yesterday it was up. So uh, there's definitely something up here, which is unfortunate. Now, one of the big strengths of Dragon Bones right off the hop is it's free. So uh, people are definitely going to like that. Dragon Bones Pro is a completely free software package. Now it's claimed some places that it's open source, and this is a misnomer. Dragon Bones is not open source. However, the runtimes are. Um, so it is definitely free to use. I've never really figured out the licensing behind the company behind it. Dragon Balls is made by a company called Egret Technologies based out of China. And I don't understand their business model here. I don't understand why Dragon Bones is free. But for, as far as I can tell, it's free. There's no strings attached. And I hopefully that remains true. Now, if you happen to know firsthand that there is a string attached, please do let me know in the comments down below. I searched and searched and searched. And for the life of me, I could find nothing. Unfortunately, I also couldn't find any you know, nice clarifying comment outside of a message form basically saying that it is free and you can use it for whatever. So until I see an actual license for Dragon Bones, I'm a little weary about its usage. But again, everything I've seen so far seems to indicate that it is completely free. Now, it might be that they're trying to tie it in and sell their Egret engine or their other pieces that they sell, such as their runtime. I am not sure at all. But like I said, it is completely free. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are runtimes. Now, these are runtimes that you plug into existing game engines, or you can build your own game engines in, and it allows you to use the um, animation features that you're creating in Dragon Bones. Otherwise, you can export as a traditional sprite sheet, but this gives you a bit more power and flexibility with your various game engines. And you can see here, uh, we've got a CPP runtime, a C Sharp runtime, an Action Script or Flash runtime, a Sprite Kit runtime, a JavaScript runtime, a Unity runtime, a Dragon Bones Unity conversion tool, a Java runtime, um, so, and then a Loom script runtime, and I don't know if Loom script is even uh, alive anymore, but so you can see there are a number of runtimes available that basically these are little segments of code that you can use to run in those various different languages or engines. All right, so that's enough setup. Let's jump into uh, Dragon Bones itself. Now, this here is Dragon Bones 4.9. This is the most current release as of the time of this video. Now, we're not going to go into a great deal of detail about how to use Dragon Bones for a couple reasons. Uh, one of the biggest ones is I am no expert on this product. I've only used it for a few hours now, so um, I don't feel comfortable, you know, doing anything more than a cursory glance. But this will give you a pretty good idea of what Dragon Bones is all about. Now, let's take this simply our armature example here. We'll download that. Why do I have to log in now? All right, so this is new behavior. I had 4.7 installed just moments ago, and now with 4.9, I need to log in in order to download demo. So maybe this is part of how things are changing, and I don't like this, to be honest. And I really don't like this uh, because it's bringing me to a Chinese-only page. So this is probably why their web page is currently down. Okay, and this might be a deal breaker. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back, and what I did is I downgraded to the 4.73 version. Now, this is actually kind of a worrying thing because I don't like the fact that the register is bringing you to a Chinese-only page. I don't like that their website is currently down. I'm hoping this is just a hiccup, uh, but I did manage to get an old version. Uh, basically, you just come into, uh, so basically, Dragon Ball's download, download an old version, and then once again, you're brought to a Chinese-only page, and I'm re requiring uh, Google Translate to figure out what's going on. So this is definitely a bash in Dragon Ball's favor, as far as um, you know, an English developer goes anyway. So not the greatest thing I've ever seen, but we're back to where we were. The nice thing is this one doesn't require me to download the sample project. So I'm gonna bring in this armature example. We'll just open this up, and here is typical Dragon Ball's project. Now you can navigate around the scene, pretty standard, so scroll in and out using the middle mouse button, and then right mouse button to pan around the scene. And then you've got um, pretty much two concepts here. You've got your uh, 
your original shape, the thing that you're going to animate, this is this looks like one sprite, but it really isn't. If we come back here, we go to the library, you'll see what we're dealing with here. Is it's actually one big texture. Oops. Let me show that in Explorer. It's a texture sheet that's sort of split out in different pieces. So this this um, image that we're animating here is actually multiple cut up images uh, that we then apply bones to. Now these this sprite sheet is created by importing the different pieces together if you want, and it's organized using a texture.json file. And that's something that Dragon Molds will take care of. So basically what you would do is model your sprite and then cut it up, or you would model it as pieces and then import them into um, Dragon Balls. So you can see here the different parts go together. So your upper arm, your eyeball, your hand, your left hand, your right hand, um, uh, etc. So the various pieces and then you've got your armature or your bones that control those pieces. So you can see here your hierarchy. Our root bone is right here and then it's got a bunch of bones um, done off. So our root node and then there's our base bone we'll call the body and then from the body we've got various other bones that branch off from there. So you can see the uh, upper left arm, upper right arm, the clothing, the head bone, the uh, left leg, right leg and tail. And then we go into the left leg for example and we see there's another there's the image attached to it. So there is the image attached to that particular bone. So if we modify this bone, the attached image will go with it. And that is essentially how your animations work here. So let's switch over to the animation tab on this guy and you'll see how it's set up. Now this is, works just like 3D applications. You've got a timeline. Uh, so this is your frame. So zero, two, four, six frames, etc. So this is a five frame animation we're dealing with. But let's switch over to one of these ones that's actually got something to set up. So here's a 20 frame of animation um, walk cycle. Now we go ahead and press play. You can see it in action. So there is the end result of said walk cycle. And these here are keyframes. So these are basically um, where points of position are set for our particular bone. So you can see, for so example, let's look at our tail. Our tail is slightly moving over time. We're gonna modify that. We're gonna go to the very last keyframe here. And we're gonna pretty drastically change this bone. So we're gonna just grab it. And you got the, the manipulator here. Oop, don't wanna do that. I wanna switch over to bone mode or pose mode, and we're gonna grab that bone tip. And we'll bring it up there, and we will set a key. So that's actually, we'll, actually no, we won't auto key, we'll just key it manually. So we're setting a key, we're basically saying, okay, this position is where we want this animation to occur at this point in the timeline. We'll grab this bone right here, and we'll move it to, and we'll key that as well. So we've just created two new keyframes in our timeline. Now we'll go ahead and play, and you'll now see our tail is responding much more in the different animation. And that's essentially how the animations go. Um, you basically, you know, so you would cut up your image, and then you would create the armature that controls the image, and then you would pose the bones over time by setting key frames or, or basically points in time to snapshot, and then the computer will interpolate the difference between. And that is a very, very basic example. Now let's look at one of their more complex examples. Here you can see a cyclist in action. And we'll switch over to animation and see the results here. So you can get more complex animations for sure, like so. Or we'll switch over once more, go back to the welcome screen, and we'll grab this guy right here. And you'll see this is a much more complicated animation. So you can see what this uh, application is capable of here. So we'll zoom that back down, zoom it out a bit. And then we'll switch over to the animation tab for this guy. So it's the same setup though. So you see just got this hierarchy of bones and this one's got special effects bones that you're seeing in here as well. Um, and again, a lot of this is in Chinese or in, um, so if I bring these down, we ultimately, so it's not too, too bad. Uh, some other examples, it's just Chinese. So trying to figure out exactly what the heck they're talking about can be a little confusing at time. But you see, we've got a number of different animations to find for this guy. So let's go to attack two and we'll go ahead and play it and play and there's attack one so there's a one attack defined for this so what you can see here is you can easily reuse the um you know the single set of drawings you did the character you created once you've created an armature for it then it's just a matter of defining these different animations so it's not having to individually define each sprite frame it's all done for you and then when you're done with this guy you can come up here and go to export at this point, you have a couple of options here. You can export it as a texture atlas, um, like what we saw her earlier, that JSON file in a single image, or we can set it up as a couple of, as a sequence of images if we wish, um, which more or less will be sort of like, or we can actually right here, literally a sequence of images. Uh, so uh, all animation, yeah, let's do this. Let's actually do one of these, C colon slash temp slash DB. And we'll export that out. 
And this will do all of the animations we just did. So this might actually take a moment in time. And we don't really need to see the end result. We just need to see sort of what it's doing. And then here is your result. So what you're getting basically is a sequence of uh, sprites for each frame in the animation. I'm not sure what that particular animation is. Steady, steady, steady. All right, so here's your walk cycle being created right now. In theory, next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame. By walk cycle, I think they mean fly cycle. But you can see there is the end result. So you can either bring it out as a sprite sheet, um, as a texture sheet like this, or you can bring, uh, save it out as their native format and then use one of their run times to actually control it. Now, here's another area where you're going to struggle a little bit is you're going to find, uh, if I go back to, uh, it's easier when the site's actually working. Let's see if uh, any chance that it's here. Uh, Uh, if I go to one of these uh, doc. All right, so it's just the home page that's down, thankfully. Um, their documentation for how to work things isn't bad. It's, you know, see, you see here, you've got mostly um, very solid documentation on using the tools. Uh, but when we get into the API, that's when the documentation gets a little bit more. Um, actually, this isn't. Oh, this isn't even the right documentation. Let's go see where's Dragon Bones, Dragon Bones. You're, you're gonna run into a lot of this kind of stuff. So if you're not good at intuiting what you need yourself in, or you can't speak Chinese, you're gonna struggle a bit implementing Dragon Bones in your particular project. So if this is an area of challenge for you, I would have to highly recommend going the, uh, the other route, um, going with um, you know Spine or Sprite or, or uh, Creature, because they are definitely um, less, or I guess more English focused in their support. So that is one of the big downsides on Dragon Bones here. And that uh, update to their project is definitely annoying. Let's see if I can, I can't even finish this. All right, it doesn't really matter. I'll ignore it for the time being. I'll delete all those later on. And that's essentially it. That is Dragon Bones. It's a little bit of it. There's a lot more to it, of course. I don't want to go into too, too much detail on using it. If you do want to have more of a hands-on tutorial, do let me know and I can take things from scratch and creating things. Uh, but that's not really the intention of this video. This is more of an introduction to Dragon Bones type video. Uh, so that's it. This is Dragon Bones. Uh, the, obviously, the biggest strength here is it is completely free and it does have all those language runtimes. And for the most part, in all honesty, the tools do work. It's just if you do run into problems or the newest version, if you want to register an account, you're kind of stuck having to know Chinese, which of course is a pretty major downside. But for, otherwise, it's a very polished UI. It's a very intuitive program to work with. The functionality is there. I don't think it has the full subset of functionality that some of the other tools is. I don't. I haven't seen like a lattice reform mesh def deformer, for example. So there might be some functionality missing, but if you just need to do basic IK-based um, sprite animation, Creature should be more than enough for you. And uh, sorry we ran into a couple snags during this demonstration, but uh, that is, I guess, indicative of what the experience is like. Uh, so this is Dragon Bone Software, completely free IK-based animation from Egret Software. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. And if you like more news on game development tools, tutorials, etc., please do click subscribe. All right, see you all later. Goodbye.